welcome to the Court Farm crossover series with Chipping Norton for episode 22 with me, Mr. Silly P. Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. It's a new year. 2024. Exciting things to come. Hopefully, we'll see how things go. There's a few things I want to clarify and clear up. Um, we are still on the Court Farms Let's Play. We're on secondment to Chipping Norton. Um, I want to clear up any confusion. Um, yeah, I, it's, I know I use different phrases, different terminology for different things at different times. And I don't... I don't it, was, it was brought to my attention. And I apologise if I've confused people generally or not misled to anyone. That, then that's not the right way. That implies I've done something bad. Not at all. Um, but I think because I'm on Chipping Norton... I've come from Court Farm. I was trying to make it more interesting as a storyline. I was trying to make it more kind of, you know, we've travelled from one farm to another farm and make it a bit more sort of interesting. And obviously, Chipping Norton is, when I've done all the sort of map tour and stuff like that, it's um, from the series Clarkson's Farm. It is the farm owned by Jeremy Clarkson. Diddley Squat Farm Shop is the farm shop that was opened. You've got... Um, Caleb Cooper contracting because Caleb Cooper works with and consults and helps Jeremy Clarkson on, on his farm. Jeremy Clarkson refers to his farm as Diddley Squat Farm, but then as Diddley Squat Farm Shop. Other people refer to it as Clarkson's Farm because they know him as Jeremy Clarkson and it's the farm belonging to him. So when I've referred to it as Clarkson's Farm or Diddley Squat Farm Shop and it's all that I, I yeah I, I apologize if I've confused people in the things I've been saying it wasn't my intention I don't think it's a you know it's not overly deep it's not a big you know a big issue but it was brought to my attention and thank you for bringing it to my attention you know who you are thank you um and I hadn't thought that I I hadn't thought that I might have done and I'm sorry if I did so anyway all the way out of the way um, we've just finished doing the seeding contract, sowing contract we had. I realise as well that on the last episode on here, I jumped from doing Caleb Cooper contracting work, went up to um, Clarkson's Farm, or Diddley Squat Farm, and loaded up the muck spreader, then grabbed the seeder, went and did a contract for, for Clarkson, and didn't finish off doing the fertilising contract for, um, for Caleb Cooper contracting. Again, I know it gets confusing. I've got all these, you know... I'm doing all these different jobs for different people. In essence, all we need to worry about is I'm doing farming. <laughs> I've got tractors. I've got machinery. I'm delivering stuff. I'm ploughing. I'm seeding. I'm fertilising. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing farming stuff. That, that's in essence. Don't, you haven't got to get too caught up in all the rest of it. You know, it's nice if you do. If you immerse yourself in it, that's what I try to do to make it more interesting for myself. But anyway. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this back. I'm going to finish off the fertilising contract. I've got another two. For KCC, I've got another sewing contract to complete for um, Clarkson. But while we were driving past, and we were driving past, I was asked, and I did mention in the last episode, could I help deliver the malt to Hawkstone? So, do I have the lights on that? I didn't. So that's what I'm going to do. Then we'll come back, we'll bring the lorry back, and we'll take this over, and yeah, we'll get the rest done. It's just to kind of ease myself in gently. I, I had toyed with, have toyed with. It's that kind of, you know, that, um, it's a cliche, um, but that new year, new me, you know, clean slate and all that. So what I was going to do was just say, you know what? And I, I mentioned this briefly when I did my kind of roundup of, of 2023 and looking ahead to 2024. I realised looking at the dates of my Let's Plays and what I've been doing, that um now this gets tricky because i can just hook these or i can actually attach them like that um but the problem is when you attach them it doesn't like doing it if you don't i can get those through if i attach them when you detach them you have to detach one then move far enough away that it, it allows you to detach the second one and it just get all gets a bit messy so i'm gonna load some more on we'll take these over Get them done. Um, yeah, so I and I and I realised that I started Court Farm. Was it in October? I'm trying to think. Um, 
Alma, I started with the premise of being that it was going to be a, and it was I overreached. It was it was a, it was a not a stupid idea. It was a nice idea in theory. The the concept behind Alma was going to be it was a it was a sort of YouTube series, and it was all going to be live stream. And every live stream, people get to choose. But the realities of being able to live stream that often wasn't realistic. I, I couldn't maintain that. that. And that was my own fault. I, 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 yeah. And the problem was then that it became a mental block. And it was that kind of, I don't know what to do now. And I left it for a few weeks and carried on with Court Farm and carried on doing some other things. And, and then when it kind of got to that point where I thought, you know what, the best thing I can do, let's just put some videos out on Alma. It doesn't matter if they're not lives. That's fine. Um, it became a mental block, I think, and, and I kind of wasn't sure what to do, and then I started doing it and kind of got into it. And the problem is, if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you'll know... Um, not, I mean, OCD, I suppose, to a degree, but when I go down the rabbit hole, like on Elmer, I had all these ideas, so I might have done sort of three, four, five episodes on Elmer, then you suddenly stop and think, I haven't put an episode up on Court Farms. Or well, Court Farm, I can't keep doing that as well. I'm surprised that still annoys people. I, it's, it's, it's just a slip of the tongue. Court Farm, Court Farms, it, you know. Um, and then you suddenly think, it's been five days, I haven't put a bit. And that's why I said about doing two let's plays gets a bit unwieldy yeah i haven't put an episode up on court farm and then you do a court farm episode and you get kind of hooked into that and of kind of oh i've got an idea and oh i'll do this next and, oh i'll do that next and you go a few days and you haven't done a video on elmer and then they drop a load of mods and a load of maps and and then you suddenly stop and think i haven't put a let's play up in a few you know and it just gets yeah i i, I don't know I'm, I'm just so then i thought over new year I was kind of deciding, I was playing a bit of snow running, much in snow running videos, and so a lot of people have said that have been watching them, and thank you to all the people that have been watching um, You should, I, mean, I should just clip these up, shouldn't I? Um, are you going to continue doing them? And I thought, well, I'd, I'd like to, but again, it comes down to time, because the time in between episodes to do a load of jobs to get to a point where there's something interesting to show, because otherwise, I mean, with snow running, don't get me wrong, I love playing it, and the reason for a long time I've played it off camera is because a lot of it gets a bit samey you know when you're just going and getting metal rolls and metal beams and you know and you're taking them from one place to another there's only so, so many times you can do that and it's interesting to watch so what i try and do is i try and do a video on something that's different something that's more difficult to transport something that's bigger heavier the the, the journey's going to be more difficult there's a risk of getting stuck there's jeopardy you know all that kind of thing um that's kind of what I've been aiming at but then the time in between whereas before when I played SnowRunner I knew I could just turn it on I could play for an hour and I would get an hour's footage and I could record ep uh, edit post and the next time I put it on record for an hour but SnowRunner's got very much like Farming Simulator in that I might have two three hours of prep work to do between episodes um, and again then you find yourself with mod reviews and map tours You've gone a few days and you haven't put a video up. So, yeah, it's difficult. So, over over New Year, um, I was talking to my brother. It was lovely. I haven't seen my brother for ages. And, and we all we spent New Year at my daughter's. Big New Year's Eve party. Fancy dress. Oh, oh, oh. It was good. And no, no one's seeing any pictures. <laughs> there were some fantastic costumes. All I will say is this. <laughs> this is I went as Bob Ross. <laughs> Wig, everything. Anyway. And um, we were chatting about channels because he did Man Cave beer reviews and he, he's done Graham Make stuff where he builds things. But he works shift work and he said the same thing. He said, I just haven't had the time to, you know, and when he does do his sort of building projects and he makes stuff and he does stuff all the time, he said, like any creator, any person that makes things, when you add in recording, and placing of cameras and camera angles and camera work a job that could take you an hour takes you five hours because you've got all the recording aspect of it that takes so much longer and that's something i hadn't thought about because that's not what i do i you know i do this um we were talking about the channel so he said why don't you just have a clean slate new year just the two let's plays you're doing just stop them just you know if, if you're finding there's a mental block if you're finding people aren't enjoying them as much aren't watching them as much just stop and just start something completely new and just go and you know what i toyed with the idea i really did 
but then I've said that I've said this so many times before I don't like um, straps there we go straps and then what one was it L1 and up let's close the curtain side I know when I've watched let's plays um, that when you kind of get into it and again that that's why I feel that people have got a little bit you know and I I'm, I'm just explaining this that um, when I watched um, Dagger in a lot and you know and all the, all the people I've watched over time you know and I would get in before I was sort of making videos myself and I would get in from work every day to watch Dagwin's latest episodes latest installment you know and if you're really into what the person's doing if you get a couple of days when there's no video you honestly get that I would get in from work and go oh and it'd be like oh there's no video today oh and you feel a little bit um okay you know I'll, I'll find something else to watch you know so if it goes two three days four days five days like I was saying um, if you're not watching the other Let's Play or it's mod reviews and map tours which you don't watch for whatever reason, then I, I totally understand why people get frustrated. And then when a video does post, you feel like you're disjointed from it then. The storyline, the flow that you were in with that person, you feel like you've kind of dropped out of that, you know. I, does, am I making sense? I don't know. Like I said, I've been mulling over a lot of stuff. New Year's been quite... Um, it's not something that normally bothers me, and I, I said this to, to my, my sister-in-law, my brother, and you know, my nieces and nephews, everyone was together. Uh, like I said, this Christmas was the first time we were all together, my family, but this was the first time we were all together. My brother, all of his kids, all of their boyfriends and girlfriends, all of my kids, all of their boyfriends and girlfriends, it was fantastic. And incredibly emotional and when I turned 50 last year last year now last year um, I sort of said this when I turned 50 I, I it really affected me massively a lot more than I thought it was going to made me a lot more introspective made me look back at stuff you know my life generally what I'm doing at the moment what you know where I could go what I could be doing and I think talking to them all about the channel, and, and that was one of the things my, my brother said to me, where do you want your channel to go this year? You know, what's your New Year's resolution? Where are you going with it? And I mentioned this on the video the other day. It was, it was kind of strange that he brought it up. I'm wondering if you watched the video, you know. Anyway. And I said, I, I don't know. I've always been very kind of fluid, very loosey-goosey with it. I've never had a set kind of, by July I want to be here, by Christmas I want to be here. I want to have achieved this, done this, gone this. You know, no, I've, I've always been a lot more kind of, you know, whatever happens, happens. I always said right from the start when I started YouTubing, I'll ride the wave as long as it lasts, you know. While I'm enjoying it, I'll do it. And if it all goes to hell, then I'll get a proper job. You know what I mean? Proper job. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know, a lot of people still view this, it's not a real job, is it? It's not a, you know... So I, I, I understand where people come from when they say that. Uh, where are we dropping this off? I think Bali, we need to go over here. Do I need to open the side again? Maybe. I'm assuming this will just sell. Straps off. There we go. So we're delivering the malt from Clarkson's but the maltings here to Hawkstone where it'll be turned into barrels of Hawkstone adult juice and um, when the apples come here it, it's the uh, yeah, the adult apple juice so move forward a little bit so in essence all I'm saying is I don't know <laughs> I don't know but yeah like I said I I I know what it's like and, and occasionally when um, a channel stops, you know, there was a guy, uh, Geek Gaming Scenics, and it was, um, well, the, that wasn't the channel, his, his brand of Gaming Scenics and stuff, because he was a model maker, terrain builder, um, uh, Luke, Luke's, uh, well it started off Luke's APS and, you know, anyway, regardless. 
and I loved watching his channel, loved watching his stuff. I, I thought he was funny and, and I enjoyed what he did. And he got a bit kind of bogged down with everything. And he was getting a lot of sponsored work and he would get companies contact him and they would sponsor him or they'd send him stuff to review or they'd send him stuff free, but he had to put it, you know, the next video had to include whatever it was they'd sent him. And like any of the, the model train guys and the people that I watch that do all that kind of stuff and they get sent 3D printers and all scanners and all this cool stuff. Um, and he said he got to a point he just felt he was putting out content because the sponsors wanted him to, not because he wanted to. And it wasn't content that he was passionate about doing, it was content that he was trying to work out, I've got this new piece of kit, this new tool, what do I make content on with it? And I guess when you're doing that, yeah, you kind of lose that flow. Um, and then all of a sudden out of the blue, and you know, you, you, you know, you know out there, you get these channels, and every now and again you'll get the, I'm done, I'm done with all this. Click baity as, you know, and you watch it and it just means that particular day, that particular project, or, you know, it could be they're moving house or flat or they're moving studio and you read it like, oh, they're not going to make content anymore. No, it's just, you know. Well, he put up a video like that and it, it was, I'm done. I can't, I'm not doing this anymore. And it said, not clickbait. Well, I've seen that before. And you're, you're like, okay, whatever, mate. So I watched it and he was genuine. Absolutely, he said, I'm done. Um, I've applied for a, again, it's funny how content creators, YouTubers, however you want to refer to them, I still don't like influencers, I'm not, no. Um, he said, I've got myself a proper job. Um, Geek Gaming Scenics, which is like his terrain building stuff, that will continue. I'm not making videos anymore. And he didn't. Bang, done, stop making videos. It's like, whoa, it was a kind of a wow. And for a while, it's weird how it does, it leaves a gap. You know, I would because every, every day I would make my videos, and when I'm editing, I do my editing. Then when my videos are rendering, or they're uploading, I'll try and catch up on the different YouTubers and stuff I follow. And I might do two or three a day. I'll try and catch up. So each week I will try and keep up with the videos. And it's weird how you go through that cycle. That's kind of I'll go through it alphabetically, and I'll pluck them off one at a time and watch. And I would go through them like, oh yeah, there's not there's no videos from him anymore. You know, it's it's weird. And um, my nephew said to me, have you thought about just quitting, just stopping doing it and doing something else? It's like, what? I can't imagine, I love doing this. I, I love playing the game. I love, I got a bit clobbered in the comments the other day and that was something else I wanted to talk about. I know people get, when I do this, they're like, oh, just play the game, just, you know, I am still playing the game, I'm still delivering stuff, I'm gonna go out and we'll get some fertilizing done, but I'm just, doing what I've always done. I'm talking about me, my life, what's going on while I'm doing it. It's just, you know, and if that resonates with anybody, if they're going through similar things or they're thinking similar things, when I talk, I said before about talking about mental health and people go, oh, not all that again. Why not? Um, it's, right, turn the lights off, engine off. So that's all delivered. There's obviously, there's going to be more to be delivered there. I don't know if it's still producing, actually. There's some there. But I've delivered what was there, which was what I was asked to do. Um, I genuinely I genuinely love doing this. Um, but anyway, so I got clobbered in the comments a little bit. And it's a, it's a fair point. And, and that was something else, again, I'm not complaining, just explaining. I want to explain to people. Um, I said this way, way back. When I started um, my channel and I would read every single comment, and I said, I've said this a few times, um, and I always promised I would, and then it got to a point where, as the channel grew, the amount of views grew, the amount of comments grew, it reaches a point I genuinely cannot keep up with it. I can't keep up with... I can't read all the comments on Discord. I can't read all the YouTube comments. I can't read all of the comments on Twitter. I can't. I cannot keep up with them all. A lot of larger YouTubers will have a management team. They'll have people they pay to do their editing of their videos. They'll pay people to do all sorts of stuff on their channel. A lot of them will have somebody that goes through all their comments and basically will give them a briefing, a sort of synopsis of how people are generally feeling um, which they can talk about in their videos, or it just guides them in the direction of, okay, well, I need to know, I need to look down this avenue or do this next or look towards that. I don't have anyone that does that for me. It's just me, you know? 
and I'm not a big enough channel that I can afford to pay someone to do that and go through you know that's just not the way it is I'll often try and read through as many as I can now that doesn't always equate to um, I don't always respond to all of them I can't respond to all this you know and then th you look at it and say okay so anybody that's that might be I don't know upset or annoyed or frustrated or cross that I haven't responded to them how do I decide what are the most important ones to respond to because I could still respond to 20% of them all but it might not be yours that gets answered in which case you'll, you'll still be frustrated and cross because I didn't answer your question because I know what it's like from if you are an individual as far as you are concerned the question you've asked is important because you want it answered so when it's not I understand the frustration I do but I, I honestly I cannot I can't keep up with it all um, and I do often talk about you know and this, this again I'm just kind of trying to explain the the way my mind works and how I'm trying to tackle the situations in that when I'll say oh so and so messaged me to say this or this was suggested or I will often say thank you to X, Y or Z, whoever it might be, for the comment about whatever, for the hint about this, for the tip about that. Because if people have given me an idea, I'm not going to come on my channel and take credit for that and go, look what I'm doing, aren't I awesome? If someone else has said to me, have you thought about trying this, that and the other? Because that's, again, that's not me. That's a bit disingenuous. It's a bit kind of, aren't I awesome? No. You know, because the person that's given you that hint or tip will watch and go, I can't believe you're taking credit for that. That's not your idea. That was mine. You know. Now, the problem I find, again, with that is when I'm in a situation where I've had lots of people suggest the same thing, I will often say on a video, thank you to all the people that commented about this. Thank you to all the people that suggested this. I can't list all of them. So it's, a, it's such a difficult one. I'll often get individual comments, direct messages. Um, it might be from my Discord. It might be direct... Twitter messages, it might be direct to my email, you know, um, and sometimes I'll write down a person's name, you know, sometimes if it's real Johnny on the spot, if I say something and someone it messages me, bang, with a solution, I might mention their name. And I, I never do it to upset people or annoy people, I never do it to make people feel small or lesser or that I'm ignoring people. I, I, it was mentioned recently that I've become arrogant and I've, I think I've had this conversation before that as my channel's grown, once I hit 100,000 subscribers, I've become arrogant and I don't care about the people that are watching my videos. Nothing could be further from the truth. Absolutely nothing could be further from the truth. Um, and I'm sorry if that's how it's come across. That was never my intention. Never my intention. So, like I say, this, this is just stuff that's been bubbling away over Christmas and New Year, and I just thought, you know what, while I'm doing this, let's just just talk. Just, you know. So if you have commented, if you have messaged, you know, I know, well, and again, when I do my... I need to switch over accounts here, because this is for Caleb Cooper contracting. Um, my My... My bit at the end of every video has stayed the same since I started making my videos. You know, I hope you found it useful and informative in some way, shape, or form, or I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you know, and I do my spiel. And I, I have always said, if you want to leave a comment, feel free. Now, I suppose the problem with that is now, because when I say that, people are now saying, well, why would you say that if you're not ever going to read them? If you're not going to respond to them, why are you telling people to comment? And that's a fair point. I guess it's that it's that YouTuber thing that you say, and everybody says, you know, drop it in the comments, you know. And if you've got someone that reads all your comments, that's absolutely fantastic. And when I started out, I was reading them all. And every now and again, I will. If I get a day where something's taken a long time to render or a long time to upload, if I've done my, my Let's Play and I've done my mod review, and there's no maps or I might sit for an hour or two or three sometimes looking through the comments I like I said I don't always respond to them sometimes I'll give them a the little heart thing sometimes I'll just give them a like um, but it's 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 so difficult to do and I don't want people to think I've, I'm 
being like that. I'm, I'm, if, if, ever, if any of you have met me, if any of you have spoken to me personally, if, if you know, when we, when we go to Lama this month, this month now, we're in 2024, there's going to be a lot of people coming to Lama for the community meet-up, the meet and greet. Honestly, hand on heart, I'm just, a, I'm just a genuine bloke. I don't ever mean to, I don't set out to upset people or make them feel marginalised or ignored. That's not who I am. It really, really isn't. But I'll be honest, I'm struggling to keep up. I don't want to quit. I'm puzzled now because I'm on KCC's account, but the field, this isn't flashing, it should be. Field 36 is the one I was on before. There we go, still letting me, it's alright. That was weird. Um, I'm going to have to go back and get some more manure. Sorry, uh, yeah, I'm, I know I'm just, not venting's the wrong word, I'm just, yeah, I don't know. While I was doing this, I thought, well, I'll just chat. <laughs> and again, for all the people that are still with me, that are still, you know, and I know I talked about on the New Year's Eve um, video, and again, I got, a, you know, you always do, and, and, and all the people that still message me and say, look, don't worry about it, you can't please everyone. And I know I can't, I, and I know that's part and parcel. It's, and, I, and I talked about the YouTube algorithm, and it's not something I normally talk about, I don't talk about, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's, and, and this is again a conversation I had over New Year with, um, with my sister and Nora, my brother. And my brother was saying, it's, it's unlike any other job in the world, any other job in the world. And people look at it and go, oh, you're so lucky. And yeah, I, don't get me wrong, absolutely. I count my blessings every day, I really do. Um, can you get bogged down and run down? Yeah, you can. Um, but what, I'm, what we were saying was, what's interesting is, when I talked about people just giving your video a like, because that can really change the algorithm, and that will push it to more people that haven't watched your content before, or it will push it to people that don't have their notifications on, to say, oh look, you know, Miss Silly Peace put a video up, these people have liked it, you know, you might like it too, and you know, and it helps push the video, which is great, and it's part and parcel. And then obviously the knock-on effect of that is, the more people that watch your videos, the more ad revenue and people say oh ads in your videos it's ridiculous that's how youtubers earn their money that's that's how you earn a revenue it's from ads it's not you don't get paid per views you get paid because the ads are on your videos and that's how you earn revenue this is i'm gonna run out of um, manure before i even finish this field this is again i'm gonna come back to this again this is what i was talking about that's two full loads of manure now so 24,000 litres no 28,000 litres um, and I haven't even finished the field. If I had 28,000 litres of chemical fertiliser, I would be able to do loads and loads and loads. But this is the reality of what farmers do. Backwards and forwards to the midden, to the manure heap. Which is what I need to do. I need to get it done. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so, so what we were saying was, and it's not, not something I'd thought about, and when you stop and you think about it, you think, that is nuts. So, here's the, the premise being unlike any other job in the world. Now, my brother works in the print. And he said, could you imagine being in a job where you go to work every month and you don't know what you're going to earn? You don't know what you're going to earn at the end of the month. It could be a brilliant month. You could get a bonus. You could do really well. Or it could be a month where the company turns around and says to you, oh, we can't afford to pay you as much this month. Um, here's what we can afford to pay you. And you come away thinking, oh, okay, then I'm not sure I can pay my bills this month. You know, that, that kind of thing. But what that is then based upon is whether or not all the people you work with like you or not. So the company every month does a survey of all the people you work with to find out if they like you or not. And if they've liked you enough, you get a good salary. 
if they haven't liked you enough, you don't. And I stopped and thought, well, yeah, but that's ridiculous. But that's what we do, day in, day out. It's based upon likes and dislikes. Now, you imagine if you were going to work and they turn around and said, well, if you get more than a certain amount of dislikes, we actually dock your pay. And I said, you stop and you think, what? Again, that's... And, you know, and it can be based on next to nothing. It could be based on something serious. You know, someone could, you know, you could be working with someone, you could be really rude to them. And they'll be fuming, fuming, furious with you. So I don't like that person. And fair enough, with good reason. It could be you didn't hold the door open for them. It could be you didn't say good morning to them. And then when the company says at the end of the month, oh, do you like so-and-so? No. No, I don't. They didn't hold the door open for me. It could be that. It could be even less, you know. Like I say, it could be you didn't say good morning one morning, you know. And when you stop and you look at it like that, you suddenly think, it is nuts. <laughs> I mean, absolutely nuts. But again, I, I'm just explaining, this is a conversation we had. And it made me suddenly stop short and think, well, yeah, okay. Um, because then people will say, well, you chose it. I, I, yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying I didn't. All I'm saying is, that's that's what how it works. That's really you know um it's so strange it's such a weird i don't know unlike anything else it really is it has highs it has lows you know it's it is very odd when you stop and you think that technically you don't know what you're going to earn every month because you don't you really don't um I don't know, I don't want to go into the nuts and bolts of it all, I, you know, there's some stuff that's quite personal and, and I've, again, been mulling over over New Year um, regarding, oh no, I'm not going to, no, sorry, I don't mean to be cryptic, it's just, you reach a point, I, I was watching Adam Savage uh, on Tested, the Tested channel, um, when I got up this morning, I was having my first my first coffee of the morning, and I was watching um, watching his video, and they were asking about his workshop and how do you, some guy had messaged and said, look, I've just bought my first workshop, how do you organise it? And he was saying, you know, I know this is not what I was talking about, but um, he was saying, um, you know, you need to keep it fluid, don't have anything fixed in place to say it will always be here, because as you change what you do and as you start to use your workshop all of those things will change where you want things positioned will change put everything on wheels if you have to all your shelving all of your equipment and put it all on wheels because you can move it around whenever you want those ones with lockable things and someone asked him is your kitchen at home as well organized as your workspace is and he then said oh you know what that's a really good idea maybe we could do a video on that he said because it is you know he said but I have to stop and give it some thought and talk to my partner about how much of my personal life I, I am happy sharing. Because going into your home is, is, a, is a different thing. If you've always been quite a private person, to suddenly go home and say to your partner, oh, we're going to do some videos at the house tomorrow, they may not be happy about that, and I can understand that. My family have always been great. Mrs. CDP, the kids, I mean, my twins don't... I don't, I'm trying to think if they've ever appeared on any of the videos. Silly G, obviously, and Mrs. Silly P have, and Farm Dog. My son never has, I don't think. And my eldest, I don't think, has. Not because they've expressed that they don't really don't want to, they just it's just never really happened. Um, so when I talk about things, and I do talk about all sorts of stuff, you know. Um, do I overshare sometimes? Yeah, probably. Should I? Probably not. Um... But as I was saying earlier about the sort of person I am, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I, I always have done. This is who I am. I, I, I'm, you know, it's it's a very, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just what, what, I, what I'm like. Yeah, I'm going to run out of manure. I thought there was so much here, I would get all the fertilising contracts done. Hmm, that's not, probably not going to be the case. Um, I'm, I don't know if there's anywhere I can buy manure from. But then you've got a way up, and it depends how expensive it is to buy. Um, whether or not, at the moment, this is all free. But if I can find somewhere to buy it from, maybe the livestock market might have some. Oh, that's down at Hawkstone, anyway, isn't it? 
will I still make enough money on the contracts if I'm paying for manure? Potentially, I don't know, we'll see. I want to at least get this field finished by the end of this episode. I'm pretty sure when you buy manure that I've used before, it's um, like a wheelbarrow um, that you can place and um, it's always a good place to put it out of the livestock market because you've got that thing of you can go to the livestock market and relieve them of you know surplus manure and slurry and stuff they've got knocking around and it works really well. Now I know I've probably just witted on for another half an hour, 40 minutes. <laughs> But I'm farming while I'm doing it. I'm doing stuff. And this hasn't been one of those episodes where I've bounced from job to job to job. You know, I literally just delivered the malt. And I've come and got muck spreader and delivered that. It, you know, sometimes it's like that. So I don't know. I'm, I'm still... The problem is I'm enjoying court farms. I'm enjoying Alma. I'm enjoying the fact I've bounced from court farm to here. Um, I like that as, a, as an idea. I've been enjoying playing SnowRunner. Um, today, the 2nd of January, was when Giants said that people will be back in the office. I'm not saying they're, they're going to be mods. Uh, they might be. But I think people are going to be responding to emails and things. There'll be a little bit more support um, from Giants. That's not to say we'll get mods from today, but we might do. And knowing what it's like when there haven't been any for so long, it could be 50 mods. It could be none. I don't know. Um, and that's the other kind of nature of what, what we do. You know, it's it has to be fluid. Because I don't know day to day what's going to happen. I have no idea. Giants could drop three mods. They could drop 50. They might not drop any at all. You know, you might be part way through making your notes for your mods and they drop a map. Or two maps. Or three maps. You know? And again, it's my choice to do them. I don't have to. I don't have to do them. But then it's interesting if I don't. People say, "Are you going to do a map tour and so and so?" Because people do want to see it, you know. So I don't know. It's it's um. Oh, I, don't know. I don't know if I'd. I've always been one of those people. I I can't. I could never work in an office. I I, I couldn't do an office job per se. Um, I was a postman for years and years and years. Then I worked at the school and was teaching. I was up on my feet, I was out and about, I, you know, we would do PE, we would do this, we would do that, we would do science, we would do, you know, I was teaching all sorts of stuff. Um, my dream job always when I was growing up was I wanted to work for um, the National Trust or something along those lines, forestry management, something like that. I, that was something I always wanted to do. I just wanted to be out and about in the countryside, in nature. And because I loved as a cadet and I loved camping and bivying and being out in the... In, the countryside and the forests and woodlands that to me just seemed like the perfect job forestry management sort of thing I thought would be just incredible and to some degree probably still is I that was something I would love to do you know one of the other channels I watch um, Mike Pullen on T Outdoors bought himself a, a, a patch of woodland there were different plots of woodland up for sale I'll probably mentioned this before as well and he bought himself some woodland and I looked at that wow was it expensive <laughs> <laughs> and his channel, he's got like two and a half million subscribers or something. Now I'm trying to think. I mean, he's got he's got quite a few. Um, and yeah, I'll, not something I'll be doing anytime soon. But that I would be as happy as a pig in the stuff I'm putting out. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to run out again. How in two episodes have I not managed to manure one field? It's quite scary, isn't it? Just been doing lots of chatting. So I'm going to have to change my outro now. I guess. Seventy-seven percent complete. Really? That is surprising because I don't feel like I've done seventy-seven percent of it. Am I going to go back over to Court Farms? Yeah, probably. I want to because I like the map. 
I want to get those harvests done, like I said. When are these Let's Plays going to finish? Well, that's my decision I've got to make. Am I just going to suddenly stop and say, right, clean slate, new map, let's go again. Um, I tried to do something different on these. Working for somebody else as a contractor. And the other one where I started on Alma, I started with the equipment that was there on the farm already, which I haven't done for quite a while. I have done a lot of starting with literally nothing, turning up on a bicycle, turning up with a hold or walking onto a map. I enjoy that. I enjoy the challenge of that. That's not to say I haven't enjoyed doing contract work for other people. And I wouldn't have done this. And I still think people don't believe me. I wouldn't have done this if Caleb Cooper hadn't reached out to me and said, will you do a Let's Play on Court Farms? I wouldn't have done it. Um, and the whole concept of working for him as a contractor. I know other YouTubers do, you know, they're a contractor and a day in the life of a contractor, that kind of thing. I probably wouldn't have done it because I like doing the whole starting from nothing and building your way up. There seems to be a big thing at the moment, and it's not clickbait, but it's um, people seem to get kind of drawn in with big numbers, you know? Whenever I've tried it, no one's cared. So I'm, I'm I don't know. <laughs> that kind of road to a billion in this let's play i'm gonna make 10 million and people seem drawn to that that kind of all big numbers how is he gonna do that and the few i've watched i'm a little bit like oh okay you know i mean it's not especially with production chains and stuff now and some of the various different mods that are available where you can convert one thing to another and some of those things are quite profitable to sell it's not actually as hard to do as you might think um but again, I want to try and do something different. But you do reach a point where, how do you do something different? What What is a different way to start? I'm trying to think of all the different ways I've started Let's Plays. And you, you reach a point, you're like, well, I'm, I'm racking my brain trying to think of a new way of starting. You know, it's, it's a tricky one. There's a, there's a phrase for what I've done in this episode. It's verbal something <laughs> verbal something um, I think before I finish what I might do is before I'm not going to go out and just do some more manuring I, I've got to get the manuring done but I know what we do need to do and what I'm going to do for that is switch back to Clarkson's let's do that do that How is this going to work? Are there forks in here? I'm trying if there are. I think there are. We need to make some tile mix ration for the cows. I was doing that before. I know I'm kind of bouncing now a little bit, but. Um, I thought we had some bale spikes somewhere. Maybe not. Is it just pallet forks? Got a lot of grain in there. You've got some more manure here. That's just stored. Maybe we haven't. Well, I thought we did. Okay. Let's go and check on the chickens as well. They probably need feeding again. That's weird. I have to use the bale spikes. That's not really perfect. But not bale spikes, the pallet forks. Not sure what size, because I'm pretty sure that mixer wagon only or that feed mixer only takes 11,000 litres is it something like that let's do the wrap on that so that one is five five. Oh, nine. Oh nine okay well what I'll do I'll put the silage in first and then we'll gradually add that and we should get a mix okay it's all these things I keep thinking oh yeah I need to do this I need to do that so yeah I mean I suppose that the problem here is I mean, we did actually gradually put all the animals in at Court Farm. This one came with animals. Um, and on Alma, we went and rescued the cows from the farm next door that went into receivership. Um, but I suppose starting one from scratch where we, we have nothing again. I did think about cause my whole Mercury series. I really enjoyed that. A little bit like Western Wilds. Oh, every time you say a forestry map, like, oh, forestry. Um, 
but that I, I enjoy that pioneering clearing a space you know clearing some ground and gradually building a farm and clearing more space to build your farm and I like that there we go um, I, I yeah I, I I'm I'm missing that challenge you know that thing of I don't know if I, maybe set myself a target so I need to earn X amount I don't know I, you know as I said when I started both these let's plays especially the court farm one the court farm one was not about that it wasn't about targets it wasn't about um, hitting a certain amount of money it was about helping court farm get up and running for the sort of summer months ready for the country park to be open to get some animals in to help get them fed do some contract work for KCC and just enjoy the map enjoy getting back to just base game farming just driving tractors doing a few jobs here and there it wasn't about that we must make money must make money that I, I you know because that had become quite a big thing I don't know I haven't got an answer <laughs> Hoping uh, 50 50, we should get a total mix ration mix. Please get a total mix ration mix. If that's not total mix ration, I'm in trouble. 11,000. Oh no, it says forage. Why is that not? That's strange because normally that would make total mix ration a 50 50 mix. Five five and five five. I'm mildly puzzled by that. That. No, they're both in the. Oh no! Hang on. Oh crikey! I went way over on the silage. I should have turned that on, shouldn't I? That's interesting. That's a strange mix. Um. I put way too much silage in. So what I need to do is empty that out and then redo it. Should have checked that first and had the bars up and just watched them gradually go up. I normally do that. I don't know why I didn't do it this time. I suppose because I was too busy talking. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, Thanks for watching.